Hey everyone, we're going to wrap up thermodynamics today. <clears throat> Got a bit of a medley of small topics that we're going to cover. Uh, the first thing that we're going to cover is free energy imbalance for mechanical theories. And so basically what that means is you'd like to, even if you come up with a strictly mechanical theory, so one that doesn't involve solving the energy equation, <clears throat> you'd still like it to obey something like a dissipation inequality, so you can't have things like perpetual motion machines predicted as working by it. So one that comes to mind would be like beam vibration. Um, you know, if you have a damping thing in it, say it can't be negative, things like that. So you're not actually solving an energy equation, but you wanna make sure that the energy <clears throat> can't like spontaneously increase, well the mechanical energy can't spontaneously increase. All right, so we're going to denote the net free energy, which we talked about in a thermodynamic perspective the other day. <clears throat> um, but now we're talking about the free energy in a mechanical perspective. The two are the same, um, but here we're not necessarily modeling the free energy. And so free energy here might include the strain energy, say. You know, so if you have a compressible fluid, it might be the pressure times the volume in addition to your thermal energy. <clears throat> so we're going to denote the free energy with a script F, and that'll be of a region. We'll write out what we're doing here. So we're going to denote the net free energy <clears throat> of this spatial region convecting with the body as F of P of T. And it's going to be related to the specific free energy psi as uh, you'd probably expect. <clears throat> So we have that F P T is equal to the integral over P T of rho times psi dV <clears throat> because the specific free energy is per unit mass. So like I said, um, the net free energy would include you know, the recoverable part of your thermal energy and your strain energy. <clears throat> so yeah, it'd be like your, your internal energy. Well, we went over what it was for the thermal side last time. All right, so we're also going to define the net dissipation. That's a terrible S. So the net dissipation is going to be <clears throat> the amount of mechanical work that is being done on PT that doesn't go into increasing the free energy or the energy available to doing work. So it is a mechanical loss. It's going into generating... <clears throat> thermal energy that is spread out, not able to be used for work, which is the nature of entropy. All right, I couldn't make a script D, capital D, so we're just gonna write a cursive one for it. The book had a nice script D one, but I'm not LaTeX, so that's the way it goes. 
So this is the conventional external power. Right, that's the work done <coughs> on PT by the surface traction force and by the conventional body force. And then minus the time rate of change of the free energy plus the kinetic energy. I guess I copied this one out of the book, but to show that it's also a minus on the kinetic energy, I'm going to put a little parentheses around the whole thing. <coughs> All right, so like we said, the net dissipation is the amount of mechanical work done on this region by external forces that doesn't increase the kinetic or free energy of that material. So it goes into, <clears throat> well, it's dissipated, it's a loss. So for mechanical theories, the applicable form of the second law, when we're not considering the energy balance, <clears throat> would be that the net dissipation be strictly non-negative. So greater than or equal to zero. That says that the best you can do is increase your mechanical energy as much as you put in <clears throat> external work. You can't get more mechanical energy than you put work in. And in fact, you know, you're always going to have a little bit of loss at least. We'll call it purely mechanical theories. And so that would be that the dissipation <clears throat> is greater than or equal to zero, or that the time derivative of the free energy plus the kinetic energy is less than or equal to <clears throat> the conventional external power. Uh, one thing to note in this equation, at least in the version of the textbook that I have, they missed the zero there, but that should be there because the kinetic energy is over here. All right, flip the page. <clears throat> So generalized power balance uh, gives this. I suppose it would be the conventional power balance. Gives us that <clears throat> the conventional external power minus the rate of change of kinetic energy is equal to the internal energy. And so the internal energy can go into dissipation, but it can also go into increasing the free energy, like strain energy. Um, <clears throat> so the dissipation inequality is going to give us something relating the two of them. So the dissipation
what we're going to do is um, substitute this in for these in the dissipation inequality. <coughs> it's equal to the integral over that region of the internal power minus the time derivative of the free energy, which is to say it's the rate of internal power that is going into loss. Let's define the dissipation density per unit volume delta. Delta is equal to <clears throat> what defined as the internal power minus rho psi dot so that the net dissipation is just equal to the integral of delta. Then the local free energy imbalance is just that uh, that delta is going to be greater than zero. Rho psi dot minus t <clears throat> inner product d is equal to minus delta is less than or equal to <clears throat> zero. All right, so that was it for that. <clears throat> so if um, you have, say, a fluid that is incompressible, then you're not going to be considering any internal energy um, if you're not modeling the thermal energy, say. So then you're free energy imbalance would just be that the Cauchy stress inner product with the symmetric part of the velocity gradient has to be strictly positive. Well, not negative. All right, now let's um, do the first two laws of thermodynamics for a spatial control volume. <clears throat> This is going to follow the exact same procedure as we did for the um, the mechanical theories, you know, the balance of mass and linear and angular momentum. All right, so the local forms of the thermal energy imbalance and entropy imbalance are like this. <clears throat> So energy balance is going to be rho E dot, it's the internal energy, <clears throat> is equal to T inner product D minus div Q plus Q. And entropy imbalance, this would be the clausius duhem inequality. Ugh. Get rid of that row, huh? Row eta dot. <clears throat> so that's the material time derivative of the specific entropy. 
whoop, not equal to, it is greater than or equal to minus the divergence of the entropy flux, which we said is Q over the absolute temperature, <clears throat> plus the entropy source, which is the heat source over the absolute temperature. All right. So for the control volume, we have that the time derivative, or rather the integral over R of rho times E plus one half magnitude of V squared dV, material time derivative of this part is equal to <coughs> So this is going to be from, you know, the, the generalized power balance or equivalently taking this and saying that it is, um, where'd that go in there? Yeah, so you're adding the kinetic energy <clears throat> increase part to it, you know. Let's see if we have that from back up here. No, we don't have it from in here. All right, all it, all it is is the balance of the total energy instead of the <clears throat> thermal energy. All right, so we have that is equal to the integral over the boundary of T N <clears throat> dot V dA plus the integral over <clears throat> the volume of the conventional body force dot V dV yeah that's that's what we did is um is equal to well the integral of that is equal to Right, that comes from our <clears throat> generalized power balance. Because this is, you apply the divergence theorem <clears throat> to the conventional external powers uh, boundary integral part. And this is the volumetric part. This is the right-hand side. So all that we're doing is replacing this with this and then splitting this up into B naught minus rho v dot squared, or v squared dot, yeah. All right, so from there, we get minus, so this is still the right-hand side of this equation. Heat flux dot n dA plus heat source dV. All right, so we can apply the same control volume logic that we've done a couple times now to this term and expand that into, that is equal to the integral over R rho E plus one half <clears throat> magnitude of V squared dV time derivative of the whole thing, which is, um, you know, the volume integral of the partial derivative of this whole mess with respect to time for a fixed spatial point. 
and then plus the integral over the boundary of the total energy flux going out, rho e plus 1 half magnitude of V squared V dot N dA. And that is equal to <clears throat> the left hand side that we just, or the right hand side that we just made, which we'll see if we can cheat a little bit here. I'm still not convinced that that ended up going any faster. <clears throat> At any rate, that's what it is. All right, and we can do the same thing for the... So this is the first law of thermodynamics for a spatial control volume. So it says that the time derivative of the energy... So that is the internal energy plus... The kinetic energy sets the total energy <clears throat> contained within the control volume plus the net flux of total energy out is equal to the net work done on it plus the net heat flow into it. All right, now we'll do the second law. We have that the integral over R of rho eta dot <clears throat> dV is greater than or equal to minus the integral over the boundary of 1 over the absolute temperature <clears throat> Q dot N dA plus the integral over the volume of the volumetric entropy source. <clears throat> All right, so we'll do our normal thing to left-hand side for control volumes, and we have that the time derivative of the entropy contained within that control volume plus the flux out of entropy by convection that is greater than or equal to that whole thing there. Let's squish things together a little bit. That barely worked. All right, so that's <clears throat> the second law for a spatial control volume. <clears throat> Next, we move on to the first two laws expressed referentially. 
and that'll be the remainder of this lecture. <clears throat> All right, so let's say that we have ourselves a spatial region that convex with the body. So it is equal to chi t of p for p, a subset of the reference body. <clears throat> so from our section on material and spatial integration and the part where we defined the first Peel Kirchhoff stress, we're going to have this. So we have that the conventional external power of the spatial region is equal to the integral over the boundary of the Cauchy stress acting on the normal dot the velocity dA plus <coughs> the integral over the volume of the conventional body force dot the velocity, so the work done by the conventional body force dv. Well, we can change this into an integration over the reference region using those changes of integration that we talked about before and replacing the velocity with the time derivative of the deformation since the two are the same. All right, so that is equal to the integral over the boundary of the material region of the first piola kirchhoff stress acting on the unit normal in the reference configuration dot the velocity, which we're now calling chi dot, dAr plus the integral <clears throat> over the volume. And I need to fix my notes here. All right, the integral over the volume of <clears throat> the referential conventional body force, which is, of course, scaled by the Jacobian dot the velocity dvr. All right, and we'll call that the conventional external power on <clears throat> that region in the reference configuration. We'll do the same thing for the kinetic energy. So the net kinetic energy is equal to the integral over the spatial region of one half rho magnitude of V squared <clears throat> dV. And in the material configuration, that is equal to the integral over the material region of one half rho r magnitude of chi dot squared dvr, and we'll call that the net kinetic energy <clears throat> evaluated on that material region. 
All right, for the next step in the book, um, we need to prove that the reference configuration internal energy goes like TR inner product F dot, um, well, the internal power. So that's, we're going to show that integrating that over the <clears throat> reference body gives you the same thing as integrating T inner product D, the internal power, over the spatial body. All right, so let's take the definition of the first piola kirchhoff stress. TR is equal to J, the Jacobian determinant of the deformation gradient, times the Cauchy stress, times F inverse transpose. So that takes <clears throat> material area vectors and gives you the spatial surface traction in that direction. And uh, you'll remember back to our talk about the velocity gradient. That uh, F dot is equal to LF. And we could say that is equal to D plus W of F in terms of <clears throat> decomposing L, the velocity gradient, that's the spatial gradient of velocity, into symmetric and skew symmetric parts. All right, well, let's look at T R inner product F dot. Well, that is equal to J T the Cauchy stress, F inverse transpose, inner product, F dot. <clears throat> so we can move the uh, F inverse transpose over to the right hand side and make it an F inverse. So that is equal to J times the Cauchy stress, inner product, F dot, F inverse. Well, if we right multiply, get out of here. If we right multiply this by F inverse, we have that L is equal to F dot, F inverse. So that is equal to the scalar J times T inner product L. <clears throat> and uh, because the Cauchy stress is symmetric, that is equal to J times the Cauchy stress inner product D since T is equal to T transpose. So in other words, T inner product W is zero. All right, so as a result of that, we have this, that the integral over the spatial region of T inner product D, the internal power, is equal to the integral over the material region of the first piola kirchhoff stress inner product F dot DVR. So this would be, that's an ugly one right there. <clears throat> that's a little better. The internal power <clears throat> evaluated on the spatial region and this is the internal power 
evaluated on the material region. Let's preempt that one there. All right, so then conventional power balance for the reference configuration is going to look like this. the integral over the boundary of the first piola kirchhoff stress acting on the unit normal dot the velocity plus the integral over the volume of the referential conventional body force dot the velocity that should be a V <clears throat> VR so this whole thing here is the conventional external power of that material region is equal to the integral over that material region T R inner product F dot D V R plus the integral over that region of one half rho R <coughs> magnitude of chi dot squared D V R the time derivative of that. And so this one here is the internal power. And this here is the kinetic energy rate. All right, then the, uh, the textbook, <clears throat> for some reason, I mean, it makes sense, I guess, but I'm not super duper into it. But I see where they're coming from. Uh, they define the reference configuration, internal energy, and entropy densities as per unit volume instead of per unit mass. Um, it's all right, just notationally it gets a little confusing is all. So we'll say epsilon r, that's the specific, in, well, it's the internal energy density. It's not specific because it is rho r e and eta r as rho r eta and then Q R as J F inverse Q Q R the volumetric source as J Q and finally the reference configuration <clears throat> dissipation gamma r as j gamma then um, we have that the internal energy the net internal energy of p that spatial region is equal to the integral over the spatial region of rho epsilon dv. Well, that is equal to the integral over the material region of just epsilon r dv r, which we will call the net internal energy of that <clears throat> material region. The entropy, they did a script ES. That was my best shot at it. 
is equal to the integral of the spatial region of rho eta dv is equal to the integral of the material one of eta r d v r is equal to s of p and then the heat flow into <clears throat> That spatial region is equal to minus the integral of the boundary of Q heat flux dot N dA plus the integral of the volume of the volumetric heat source dV is equal to minus the integral over the <coughs> boundary of the material region of Q R dot N R D A R plus the integral over the material volume of <coughs> Q R D V R is equal to Q P. then the entropy flow will be related to the heat flow by dividing it by the temperature locally. So J P sub T is equal to minus the integral over the boundary of the heat flux divided by the absolute temperature dot the unit normal dA plus the integral over the volume of the heat source divided by the absolute temperature. We can convert that to the reference configuration now is equal to <coughs> minus the integral over the boundary of QR divided by the temperature dot n r d a r plus the integral over the volume <laughs> did the same thing twice there huh all right there we go q r d v r and that is equal to the entropy flux or entropy flow into <clears throat> that spatial or material region. And then H of PT is equal to the integral PT gamma dV is equal to the integral of the material region of gamma <clears throat> R dV R is equal to H P. All right, so from all that, we get the global form of the first law in the reference configuration. We have that the time derivative of this integral So now we get the row R here because ER implicitly includes it. And that's our newfangled way of writing the velocity. Time derivative of that integral 
is equal to minus the integral over the boundary of q r dot n r <coughs> d a r plus the integral of the volume of q r d v r we're just going to go for a new line here rather than try to squeeze it all in plus the integral over the boundary of the <coughs> work done by surface traction And then plus the integral over the reference volume <clears throat> of the work done by the conventional body force. And the global form of the second law is going to look like this. We have that the integral over P gamma R dV R is equal to <clears throat> the time derivative of the integral over P of A to R plus the integral over the boundary of the entropy flux dot nr d <clears throat> ar plus the integral over the volume the entropy source due to heating basically and that whole mess is greater than or equal to zero. <clears throat> Since the material region P and the reference configuration density rho R are independent of time, we have this. We have that the time derivative of the integral over P of ER dVR is equal to the integral over P of the material time derivative of ER dvr and in the in the reference configuration the material time derivative is just the partial derivative with respect to time holding space fixed we're going to have a very similar looking thing for the entropy density is equal to the integral that of the material <coughs> time derivative Eta R like that. And then for the kinetic energy, the time derivative <coughs> of the integral of one half rho R magnitude of chi dot squared dvr time derivative of the whole mess is equal to the integral 
over P of rho R chi double dot dot <coughs> chi dot <coughs> dvr. So from the divergence theorem, the first law is going to look like this. The integral over P <coughs> of ER dot plus the material divergence of QR minus the source minus the first piola Kirchhoff stress in our product F dot. <coughs> D V R is equal to zero, and the second law the integral <coughs> over the material region of gamma R D V R is equal to the integral over the same of eta R dot. <coughs> plus the material divergence of Q R divided by the absolute temperature. So that's the vector Q. And then minus Q R over the absolute temperature. Whole thing integrated over the reference volume is greater than or equal to zero. <coughs> So the localization theorem is going to give us that, you know, these equalities and inequalities apply to <coughs> point-wise, um, since the choice of P there is arbitrary. So we have that the material time derivative, which in the reference configuration is just the partial time derivative of ER plus material divergence of QR minus the source minus TR inner product F dot. <coughs> is equal to zero and gamma r is equal to the time derivative of entropy density plus the divergence of qr <coughs> over the temperature minus qr over the temperature is greater than or equal to zero. And finally, we'll come up with the referential form for uh, <clears throat> the free energy imbalance, which you would use for purely mechanical theories. Psi r is defined as rho r times psi, so psi r is equal to epsilon r minus absolute temperature times eta r, so the free energy density in the reference configuration looks like the specific free energy <coughs> in the spatial configuration. 
All right, substituting that into the referential first and second laws is going to give us our free energy imbalance. So we have <clears throat> that the time derivative of the free energy plus the entropy density times the time derivative of the temperature is equal to the time derivative of the internal energy density minus the temperature times the time derivative of the entropy, and that is equal to first piola Kirchhoff stress times F dot minus 1 over theta QR dot material gradient of the temperature. Oop, skipping a step there. Probably like, where the heck did that come from? All right, yeah, so we got plus div QR plus QR minus, this is going to be the <clears throat> Basically, if you look here, it's uh, this one gives us those, and then this one is going to give us this part here. Write as small as I can. Ooh, this will work. All right, so that's what we have. And uh, basically what we'll do <coughs> is we're going to apply the uh, product rule or quotient rule to this first term here, and it'll cancel out with that. And what you end up with is that is equal to first peel Kirchhoff stress inner product f dot minus the leftover term from that which is going to be one over the absolute temperature qr dot grad temperature And then, you know, this one and this one will cancel out. And you get plus absolute temperature gamma R. All right, so let's move these over here. <clears throat> All right, so that is the free energy balance, I guess, or it's the balance of energy in terms of the free energy, temperature, and entropy is really what it is. It gives you the evolution equation for the free energy. And then the second law is going to be the time derivative of the free energy plus eta r times the time derivative of the temperature minus TR inner product F 
dot <clears throat> plus one over temperature QR dot grad phi is equal to minus theta, the temperature times gamma r, which is strictly less than or less than or equal to zero. All right. So looking at this, we can see, boy, so the heat flux had better be aligned opposite the temperature gradient. So probably it's going to be something like if you have an isotropic thing, minus uh, some constant times the temperature gradient. So this one is the local referential free energy imbalance, this uh, last equation. All right, so that wraps it up for thermodynamics. <clears throat> Should be able to do homework five without any trouble at this point. That'll be due, I think I have it due on the 12th, Saturday. Um, the thing's open until Monday in case you need some extra time, but please do submit it on the 12th if you can. And we'll get you uh, one more homework posted. We'll probably do three or four, you know, lectures after this one. Um, I'll try to get those all out by the end of this weekend so that you can just kind of pound out that last homework assignment and be done with everything early on next week. All right, have a good one.